So normally in this part of the video, there would be some kind of voiceover that gives you the tech specs and some nice music and some good visuals and things like that. And those elements will probably still be there, but I wanted to do something different for this one because this one is special and I'll show you why. You can see the front end of the Accutech AK looks quite different. It looks a lot like this. And the reason we're doing this in here is because this is almost impossible to photograph in the raw. So this is the complete Accutech assembly. And as you can see, it's a little bit different. And I do believe that they are offering these so that any AK builder out there can use their assembly if they so choose. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff different about this, and this should have been done a long time ago. But finally, somebody had the balls to do it. We have four dimensions. We have the minor diameter, the major diameter, the thread depth diameter, and the thread crest diameter. Traditional AK mounting of suppressors is you have a brake or other mounting hardware that goes on the front, goes down the threads, and then indexes off of the minor diameter. And what you end up with is just that little donut of material on the end, which is actually much thinner than a real AK barrel. What Accutech did is said, hey, screw that. We're going to just redesign the whole front half and make the diameter of the barrel, the major diameter, big enough to allow us to put a precision cut shoulder on there. So now we take this for granted, but now we have a shoulder that we can then index that break off of. So it's not basically teetering on the end of the barrel. Also, when we do that operation, the barrel is still on the mandrel. So the thread cut is concentric with the bore. So that's really important for getting all those things to line up. So to accomplish this, it's not as easy as just popping a new barrel in it, remember. They had to redesign the whole thing because they had to redo the front side tower and the rear side tower and the bushing for the handguards because remember that barrel diameter sets this dimension and this dimension. So they basically completely redid this thing. But now if we go back to the actual gun, they've added finish which is a good thing, obviously. It's not blowing out the dynamic range of my camera anymore. Furniture, Phoenix Technologies, both the handguard, the grip, and the stock Phoenix Technologies. They've added this rear sight on here. It's, it's fairly well serrated, so low glare. And the tower takes standard front sight posts for whatever you want to add in there. If you want to run tritium or anything like that, you have the option. The other thing I will say is that this uh, safety here is actually quite nice. You can actuate it with both up and down motion with just your index finger. It allows you to reach it quite well. Uh, very well executed, well tuned on that part. The rest of the gun is composed of US made parts, except for the trigger, which I believe is a Bulgarian. Initial headspace, we have a go gauge here. Realistically speaking, this should be a strip bolt, but we're just going to go for it. And it should close. It does close. Since this gun is new manufactured and has not yet been fired, we're going to go ahead and try the no go gauge. It should not close on this at new manufacturer. No close. Now back to our go gauge on the bolt now that it's been taken out of the carrier. And we're going to see what the initial measurement looks like for lockup before we go to the die cam test. And now this should rotate over and we should be able to get a measurement. And it looks to me like there is no measurement. It looks to me like that thing is bottoming out on the trunnion. Ideally, we want to see a tight lockup at initial manufacture. And we usually like to see, or at least I like to see, about three millimeters of clearance so it would look like about that much clearance between the camming lug and the trunnion. Different manufacturers run different specs for different things. This 
is acceptable. Uh, we can start the testing with this gun. This is just a data point that they've depleted a little bit of their head spacing on lockup uh, and new manufacturer before we've even started testing. So this is just something that, again, something to note before we begin. Initial accuracy on the Accutech. And because we have this little tiny pick rail here, we're not gonna try to mount any magnified optics on this. So this is gonna be more of a functional accuracy thing. Basically, I've got a target down there at 50 yards. We're gonna shoot three rounds of our go-to Fioki brass cased 7.62x39 stuff. And we're gonna shoot three rounds unsuppressed. And then we're gonna go ahead and combine it with the suppress test. We're gonna use the Dead Air Sandman K. Same thing that we used on the ODS test. And basically we're just gonna see, is there point of impact shift? What kind of relative groupings are we getting in comparison, suppressed versus unsuppressed? So without any more yakking, A little bit of take up on the trigger. So I'm gonna shoot one more because the first shot, I wasn't really ready for the trigger. Okay. All right, let's go take a look. So remember when I said that I wanted to shoot a extra round because I thought I pulled one? I'm gonna guess that's what that is right there in the first group. So I'm gonna say that more than most likely, this is our unsuppressed group, and then this is our suppressed group. They're relatively the same size, and there's a little bit of difference here, but as far as an AK is concerned, I don't consider this point of impact shift. I get concerned about AK point of impact shift with suppressors when we have, like, this is the unsuppressed group, and then we're missing the target, or like it's down here, or it's way up here, or something like that. This is just fine. So I am very happy with this. I will take this all day long. Die chem test, and for anybody who isn't familiar with our die chem test, first of all, where have you been? Uh, second of all, I have some videos in the description box down below for you to review, but basically what it does is it gives us an indication of how the rifle is distributing the unlocking forces between the primary and secondary locking lug, and to do that, we use layout fluid, die chem, thus the name die chem test. Anyway, we start off by painting the bolt and then just hand cycling five rounds to the gun, Two, three, four, five. We'll recover those later. Don't worry, we're not gonna waste it. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I see a little bit of distribution on my phone, not yours. Secondary locking lug, we like to see if it's gonna favor one or the other, we like it to favor the primary locking lug. That is a misnomer, just a disclaimer for anybody who's new to AKs. They are both needed. It's not like, hey, this one goes first and then this one is second. The reason we say that is because if you look at the primary locking lug on the trunnion, it is much larger than that of the secondary locking lug on the trunnion. So if we're gonna choose one, we like to choose the other one. Now, that said, that is just stage one. We do this twice. First, just hand cycling. The next round, we're gonna actually shoot live ammunition, which really is the test to see how it's doing. A lot of times we see it shift one way or the other. Okay, and this has shifted a little bit. I'm gonna call it roughly even. You guys be the judge. Maybe, again, maybe a little bit towards the secondary lug, but uh, this is not outrageous. The important thing is that we're seeing marks on both of the lugs. What I have here is the adverse test. We always like to do some kind of challenging test. So what I did is I found an ammo can that was had a little bit of 7.62 by 39 in the bottom of it, probably the last you know five years worth of just random droppings that were put into an ammo can, and it is rusted to crap. All of the ammunition that I put in this thing, it's a mixed bag, three different types of manufacturers. I put it in a good magazine to hopefully take the magazine component out of it, but we're just gonna see if this thing runs or if it blows up. Obviously, we're doing this towards the end of the test. I feel like we need to do... It stopped on a Russian Bakelite. And it's a magazine issue. We should probably do like a magazine compatibility test.
my poor eight inch gong. Okay, except for that one magazine compatibility issue, it will run ammunition that is corroded, in case you ever needed to know that. Don't do that, okay? Don't do that. Chasing the magazine compatibility test now, and what I've got here is eight different types of magazines laid out across the table, 10 rounds each in them. Basically, we're gonna put one in, shoot the 10 rounds, move on to the next one, see if it's compatible. Special thanks to Gun Mag Warehouse for allowing this diversity to be possible. And I've actually got them laid out in a little bit of my order of preference, if you will. So we'll start out with the Russian Bake Steel Magazine, Bulgy Poly with the reinforcements on both the front and the back, the Tapco Magazine, the X-Tech Magazine, the US Palm Magazine, the Pro Mag, and then the bottom of the barrel, the Magpul Magazine. Bake light in. <laughs> uh, of course, you know, the uh, my favorite magazine decides that it doesn't want to run. You can't make this up, guys. X-Tech. The X-Tech magazine would have an issue. It really does not like the X-Tech magazine. We're gonna call, we're just gonna leave that one round. So uh, go with the negative on the X-Tech. That, now this magazine, the US Palm, is locking up a little bit weird. Yeah, there we go, it just locked in. I think we're gonna get the same performance out of the US Palm, so we'll go ahead and skip the US Palm too. Pro Mag. Skip the Pro Mag, I guess. It didn't like that one. Okay. Magpul ran. These Pro Mags, they swell really bad. In fact, I have another AK that I can't even get this magazine into. Or not this particular magazine, but the other Pro Mags that I have. X Tech Magazine and the US Palm Magazine. They look very similar. In fact, uh, we're not gonna go there. Um, <laughs> these other two magazines are pretty fat and that can screw with the way that they seat and home themselves in the, in the gun. So we don't reshoot groups. We don't reshoot magazines. Color done. Hit, 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 hit. We didn't set up the uh, hostage target again. So I'll just kill him again. Just a lay down target now. Yep. I keep losing this front. Holy cow. Got there it. Go. How many you got left? Oh, uh, I have no idea. Pull it out, let's see. Five? Plus Dump one. them in that van right there. Okay. It should be that six. That was still better though. Yeah. Got it. Cool. So, 
the thing I'm going to say is I have to agree with you on the front sight. It's really nice for accurate shooting when you're when you're holding still and you can concentrate on it. But I think one of the things that we forget about is that AR posts are designed to be used with a vertical limit rear aperture. Before you go, just remember, the only thing that matters is you look cool. Look cool for Instagram, right? That's right. Okay. So with that being said, but Hit, hit. Um... Miss. Oh, that's not a target. <laughs> Hit. Miss. Hit. Okay, so let's take a walk. Target's here. <laughs> that is where I thought the target was. <laughs> so, um, no target. Target. I'm just gonna go ahead and blame my eyes and the fact that they no longer work, not the gun's fault. <laughs> oh, one round one left. left. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm trying to walk. You got a heat mirage yeah. off of Ooh. the suppressor and all of the above, and yeah, I haven't painted the targets in like a wow. year. I love how they're camouflaged. Yeah. yeah. Brown on brown. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs>